round one, fight! So you can! Most people know Big E, Eric Small, I don't do nothing fancy, from Philadelphia, born and raised, Southwest Philly, well, yeah, Southwest Philly, been there for 25 years, and I run in DC. I was always a gamer, but, you know, pinball machine, Miss Pac-Man, stuff like that, like I said, I'm, I'm old. Uh, championship edition, probably was the best in Philly, you ask Julian Robinson and all of them, they know, they stayed out the arcade when I used to manage it. On 40th and born at Galaxy Arcade. And that's how I got into it. Camaraderie. Friendship. I mean, I got I, got, I knew a lot of them. I knew Justin when he started off when he was 14, 15. Same thing with a lot of the players from New York, Philly, Maryland, Virginia. All up and down the East Coast, I should say. And out west. And I like being around everything. If I didn't like it, if I didn't like the scene, I wouldn't be doing it. I love this scene. When I first left the arcade, because you know we was dealing with cabinets, I didn't really have to do anything. I say the first couple years, it was stressful because I didn't have the proper help. You know, you would get people to call, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Then three days for the tournament, you don't hear from them. So that kind of slows it up. But then you know, met people like Rob, started meeting people like Stickball, got Allen with the filthy gear. You just Dip, How, Jack so you know, people like Phil, Jeffy, uh, Todd Dwyer, um, wow, they just go on and on. If I miss anybody, don't get offended, y'all know I love y'all. And you get the proper help. Now I had a proper help. So it's not, it's really, it's not exhausting at all. There's one I gotta carry 30 TVs up the steps in here and drag all the Playstations around, but it's only three days. The streaming. Back when we went to we went to tournaments. We traveled, Cali, <laughs> uh, Chicago, New York. We drove to the plains. You know, a lot of these streamers don't. They should feel. I'm looking for um, blessed. I'm gonna say it. Blessed to have these streams on, man. Because you you used to have to wait for a tape or somebody to make a CD or see it wasn't the YouTube wasn't out. All that stuff wasn't out. I just feel like the scene was somewhat better back then. Well, Rob, I met him uh, at NEC 7, actually. That's the first time I ever met this guy. I was a player then. First time in the in any tournament. I, NEC 7 was my first tournament. Well, I went up there. I went up. Rob was doing stuff up media in Springfield section of the Pennsylvania. I went to a couple of his tournaments, you know. <laughs> After what, NEC yeah, yeah. 7, you know, he wanted to talk. You know, I used to do March Madness when I was in the arcade and Rob was doing Winter Brawl, so I said, okay, let's just mix it up. I'm about two, almost going on two years, it'll be two years in February. So it was more like 
organized TOs didn't want to help each other. It was like, it was a pride thing. When, and I guess after they got to know me and I get to know them, we talk. Let's help each other out. Let's not pull away from each other. Let's help each other out. Jaxel, he can call me. I bring systems up to him. Same thing with Johnny Cage and the ECT. Seasons beaten. Anybody can call him. And I bring the stuff to him. This is, yeah. scene is getting better with that. Well, I would like to, I would like to grow out of this place. I'm probably already grown out of this place, but being, this is Philly. Just like any other major city, New York, anywhere. You go to another hotel out here, it turns into five to $7,000 a day for eight hours. Not 12 hours, not 16 hours like we get. But just the growth, getting new players keeping old players in and just keep getting new blood, keep training people, keep just gotta keep the community growing. That's my goal. Yeah, we, got, we got some guests. Yeah. So let me get this tournament scene on them. That's the next thing you know I got people every week. Every week. Start coming up from Baltimore, Virginia, down from New York, or tourists travel down here and take everybody money. Um and that's when Alex came up to me about after a month or two and said, yo, why don't we do something big? I said, all right. We sat down, we came up with the name, and that first NEC was crazy. Crazy. Tekken had over 106 people. Finished it in one day, one cabin. <laughs> CBS won. Wow. Oh, man, we was in there for two days. Jason Coles, Nelson. Oh, man. Uh, there were so many names there. That first day, we were in there, a tour with Julian, Eddie. We were in there at 5 in the morning, finishing off the competition. And it just went from there. It just went from there. Some people just got it. Justin, Julian, I, when you can get him focused again. Rick, Sanford. It's just, when I'm watching him, I'm sitting there like, I thought I'd seen everything in this game. And here you go do something new. Like, where did this come from? It's just watching him play like super. I love it. I love to watch it. I, I think the game is entertaining. Marvel. It was entertaining me for a while. And, you know, it's time for a new one. It's just, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say, y'all. Like, I mean, they're men now, but like I said, I knew these guys when they were teenagers <laughs> and stuff like that. To see where they're at and see they're still moving. The way this world is, the way our neighborhoods is, the way the state you live in, the city you live in. And you're still here functioning. You're still coming down here having fun. To see them when I go to Vegas, the, the people I haven't seen video, I haven't seen them in a year or something. I haven't seen them since NEC. It's like, it's love. I, I know I got somebody to hang out with. And I know these guys are still around. If they need me, I'm a, I'll be there for them. Gotta support the community, guys. You gotta do it. Even if you're watching them stream, some stream monsters like y'all like to call yourselves, you gotta get out sometime. Come on out, travel. You only live once. You only live once. I go to Vegas every year and to go to another state, wherever I go, I like to go get something to eat. And that way, I can almost say I probably got friends in every state. And to know that, that's what this about is. It's like, it's just getting close to people, getting to know people. I mean, come on, we can all go somewhere and we know somebody. <laughs> they can show us a good time or they can show us where to eat. Boston, to Cali, to Florida. So up to Maine, I mean, even in Canada, Montreal, our northern brothers, I haven't forgot y'all, even though y'all didn't come here this week. No, it was, it was a couple people here from Montreal, I can't say that. Um, we had some people from Canada, Mexico, and France. Uh, the Frenchies did come over here for Soul Calibur, and they played in, they played in Super too. Mm -hmm. One of them did, week. I, be, uh, I believe Dina. Diana. Yeah. And, I don't know, you just gotta show the community love. It's the only way we're going to grow. My name is Brandon Wesley Ellerby and my handle is Dr. Chaos or T-Boss Legend online.
I am eight, no, oh, damn, 21 years old. I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Pen yeah, I'm sorry. And what character do you use? The character I use in Street Fighter 4 is Ken, Nakuma, and a little bit of Adon. Uh, I've been playing Street Fighter 4 since we got it at our arcade in, I believe, it was August 2009. We got the vanilla, vanilla. Yeah, vanilla. My favorite player, um, Overall, it would probably be Dragon Boy uh, for Vanilla, but I haven't really seen a lot of rip videos recently in Super, so right now I would say Infiltration. My favorite personal accomplishment, uh, the first time I beat, I guess, Sag uh, I think it was, yeah, Nestor at East Coast Throwdown. Uh, I had a really tough time with fighting Saggots in general in Vanilla, and beating him, it felt like I was uh, getting better along. Dr. Chaos, I got that from, it's like in high school, my friend used to go around saying, the evil Dr. Chaos and stuff like that. I think he got it from South Park, and he just like knocked stuff over and say, "Yeah, I just call it chaos." And I just kind of ran with that. It's kind of random. Uh, I used to play online a lot, like Marvel's Capcom One and stuff, when I was about like a, uh, like ninth grade and stuff. But when I heard that uh, University of Pinball in Philadelphia was getting Street Fighter Four for arcade, I decided I was going to go ahead and uh, play offline. My first tournament I went to was, uh, was like a local Street Fighter Four tournament on arcade for Vanilla, and I. Like, yeah, and after that was NEC uh, 9, I, I want to say. It was perfect send board to the Vanilla Cabinet, I remember. I think that was 2009. My first tournament, uh, I believe I got 4th or 5th place. I know I lost to Philly 1. I used Ken all the way, and he beat me with Ken. It was 2-1. He did some random stuff, but yeah, it's all good. Oh, shout outs? Oh, it's going to be a while. Oh, I was just shout outs to Kazi, because he's the best and he's filming right now. Shout out to everybody in Philly and shout out to everybody out in the world. Everybody online, my friends list online. DMG, Wawa, uh, Focus Attack, Lizard Lick, um, huh? Four Square, yeah, shout out to Four Square and all my achievements. I will be the mayor of the break one day, one day, but until then, shout out to everyone. Yeah, Twitter, Facebook. My name's Zach. Uh, my handle's Katamari, so pun off my last name. 22. I'm uh, from New Jersey, actually, but uh, living in Philadelphia right now, so playing with all these guys. Um, I'm mixing up, but primarily, I guess I'm known for Rufus. But I mean, I play other characters like Adon and stuff, but mainly Rufus, yeah. But uh, I've been playing for. I guess seriously, I've been playing for two years now, but I, I mean, obviously I've played Street Fighter before as a kid and even throughout, but only about two years serious now. And I mean, no one probably knows him, but we used to have this guy called Philly One that, man, he did not, he did not care if he won as long as he did something flashy. I mean, it was great, but man, he lost too much because of that, but yeah, I'll go. I'll go with my friend. Yeah, I mean, a while back we used to we used to have tournaments in the arcade, but we kind of the venue got more or less shut down. Um, so basically, there was really nothing else to do. The scene was kind of dead, so I just decided I'll just be the nice guy, try it out once, open up my house, and have a tournament. And it, I guess, was big enough. And, it really wasn't big enough, but we made it work anyways. You know, I was having anywhere between 20 and 30 people over every other week on a Friday night. Just rain, snow, didn't matter. People were coming. What's the name of your tournament? <laughs> um, the name of the tournament was actually called the T-Boss Challenge. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense unless you've known us. Shoutouts? I'm going to give a shoutout to the same guy that I talked about earlier, Philly1. He's out in Korea now. He left us. We miss you. You, for whatever reason you see this, I don't know how, but we miss you, man. Come back. Come back to the States. Yeah, real world, are we going now or what? Yeah, this is... My name is Josh Wong, and my handle on Xbox Live is Super Cute Turtle. Uh, I'm 26 years old right now. I'm from New Jersey. I've grown up here since I was 10, but... But I was born in Taiwan, and uh, my family moved here when I was one or two. I can't even remember. Uh, what character do I? I uh, when I play tournaments, I, I like to counterpick 
people, but I, I use a lot. Um, too many to name. Just anybody that, that's easy enough to learn fast. And if they're truly fun, then I'll, I'll give it a little more time. Fighting games. Uh, well, casually, I've been playing fighting games for what seems like since I was maybe 10 years old when I first found the local arcade. And uh, professionally, I guess I would say that since I was 17, uh, I found University Pinball, which held regular tournaments. And I guess that was the start of my, my so-called career. I think Asian people are better at fighting games. The reason I think they're better at fighting games, the reason why Asian people are better at fighting games is uh, it seems that around here they devote more of their time to it more than anything else. It isn't like they are naturally just better. It just seems that they, they put more work into it. I pick a lot of characters because I just feel that uh, it improves your, your chances of winning. Um, I know that counterpicking isn't really respected like that, but uh, winning is. So uh, Guile is my favorite character in Street Fighter. He's, uh, he's, he's to the point. Uh, he has a, a, a very specific plan and a very easy one, and it's very hard to take him out of that plan. So My, my love of uh, the games has uh, kept me in the scene. Um, they, they come out with a new game every now and then uh, that, I, that I like to play. Like, it isn't just Capcom games either. It's, well, I didn't ever went to tournaments for Guilty Gear that much, but Guilty Gear, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, that's where it started, I think, the first professional tournament that I went to. And also uh, Tekken, or Tekken 5. Tekken 5 was the, the game that I like to play. So uh, every time they come out with a new game, you know, there's something to learn. And uh, it's just very fun to interact with people uh, through video games. So. What do I do for a living? For a long time, I tried my hand at uh, playing poker professionally. Uh, I did that for maybe a couple of years. Well, it, it, it's very sad to see arcades fall. Uh, my personal opinion is I, I wish they could stay around because it's really great to meet people uh, while you play them. But since online became the preferred uh, place to play, then you know, you kind of just have to change with the times. So a lot of us know each other anyway, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't as bad for me, but. I really feel that the people who, who play from, from home and, and don't go out as much, you know, they're, they're missing out. I plan on being in the fighting game scene un, until it stops being fun, uh, which I, I don't think it's ever, I'll ever st stop having a good time at these things, so probably for, <laughs> for a very, very long time. All right, my, my, my name is, all right, oh, God, it's funny. Um, all right, my name is Brandon, and uh, my handle is uh, Dima High on SRK. Uh, I'm also from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm 26 years old. I forgot the age. Uh, right now, I actually play Rufus. I actually like to play Rufus. Oh man, I've been I've been playing fighting games since about 1997. Woo. Uh, the first tournament I went to, uh, the first official tournament I went to was at uh, 40th and Spruce at the Arcade University of Pinball. It was um, NEC, I believe, NEC3, uh, and Big Eric was holding it. It was my first major. It was like a ton of people. I was nervous. It was. It was crazy. Um, I don't remember exactly what place I came in, but I did pretty bad. Um, I was playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 at the time, and I used I used uh, Iron Man, Storm, and Sentinel back then. Uh, a, foot, a good fighting game? Well, first of all, it has to have balance. But as you, can, as you can see now, a lot of fighting games don't really have balance when it first starts out, so they always do revisions of them overall. But if you have good balance, um, a good amount of solid characters, uh, an in-depth combo system, so it's not just like, oh, A, B, C, launcher, one, two, three, knockdown. Like, that's too simple. Like, you have something in-depth like overheads, uh, mid attacks, uh, low attacks, um, certain uh, way you can zone out characters. Um, you know, it, it's, it's basically really all about like, in, it's, it's all about depth. As long as you have depth, you're good. Uh, I like it because it reminds me of like a chess match. Like, each way each player is playing, like, if you're playing a normal like two out of three, you have only that two out of three set to figure your opponent out. So you're figuring your opponent out while they're also figuring you out. So say you beat your opponent the first game, right? So then they're ad adapting to you. So if they adapt to you, like, oh, you know, I got to switch up my style, I can't run the same thing. They beat you, then it comes down to the last game, and then you both have to adapt to each other at that last, that last moment. 
and pull off with a victory. It's like you have to, uh, it's almost like real life. You know, like if you go and fight somebody, you can't go rushing in, you know? Like you got to see what kind of punches they throw at first and then kind of figure out, okay, this is what he's you know, going to do. And then figure out what he's weak to and what he's not weak to and then use that to your advantage. Like I like the fact that it's always like a pressure situation, you know? Like you also, uh, you find out more things about yourself as a person, believe it or not. Like if you're just somebody who, um, who's really calm and patient, almost like says like, oh, this guy's really calm and patient in real life. If you're fighting somebody that's like real wild and crazy, most of the time they're gonna try to like, you know, just rush you down and everything. Whew. <laughs> it, um, it has a lot of problems and which is why it got revised. I think about, this is his fourth time now. They're coming out, they did a revision uh, to the original one, which is vanilla, all of a sudden vanilla. Uh, actually two revisions to that. Then they did um, a revision to uh, Super, and they're doing another one with uh, Yun and Yang are coming out in the arcade, I believe. A lot of problems it has is that, uh, like, if you jump in on somebody and say you press Roundhouse, like, it's not enough hit stun there, so if you're blocking, you just bust out with an uppercut. Like, you can't really, like, put somebody in pressure situations because it's always, like, an a EX move to get out, you know, or, or backdash. Like, backdash shouldn't be that good. Like, if I'm, if I'm hitting you, you shouldn't be able to just go, oh, I'm gonna get away, backdash, you know? Like, that's stupid. Um, also, I think they don't, they can't really decide which characters they want to make good and which characters they want to make bad, you know? Like, one moment, Rose sucks in Vanilla, right? She sucks. Terrible. Now all of a sudden she's great, which is good, but why not just make it like that in the first place? You know, and, and people like Vega, who have no option whatsoever on Wake Up, like, that's terrible. You need to, they need to make it even, not just have certain characters just beast on everybody, you know? All time, probably, um, I'll probably say, I'll probably say Cammy. Why? Oh, <laughs> oh, why Cammy? Uh, I don't know. I always liked her in the anime. I liked her in the comics. She's an assassin. She's uh, she's fast. Uh, even though she doesn't have that much health, but she has a lot of combos. Like once she gets on you, you feel scared, so she can pressure you a lot. Uh, she has a really good anti-air. Um, I don't know, like she's just like a really solid character. I just like her a lot. From what I experienced while being in Cali, I think like the biggest difference in their play style versus the East Coast play style is that Cali's more, uh, they actually, they actually do play as a whole over there. They're all learning from each other consistently. They're not just playing like one character, like like over here, there was like a lot of Balrogs, you know? Like a lot of Balrogs and Bison and it just hold down back and you know, it's, it's whack, you don't learn nothing. Over there, they're playing Forte, Rose, Kami, uh, Sakura, all the characters. So when you play, when you play in California or like anywhere on the West Coast, you're consistently learning stuff. And like, they're not just gonna like beat you and say, "Oh yeah, you suck." You know, like how they do over here sometimes, even though it's gotten a lot better. But over there, like if you don't know how to be something, they'll actually sit down and explain. Okay, look, this what beats this. This doesn't work against that. Like they play more as a unit, I think. In my opinion, I'm not saying the East Coast doesn't. I haven't been here for a while. I mean, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to like trash my own state. But um, like seriously, over there they do play as a unit, and you learn a lot more about the game and the characters overall. And that's in any game, not even just Street Fighter. Like they take a lot of time into their games. Like they're a really solid community. Really solid community. I was. I'll admit, I was actually scared. Like because you know I was only about like 15, 16 when I first started, and I didn't know anybody, and it seemed really intimidating because like. These players, like, at the time, it was Marvel, CVS, uh, CVS 2, uh, CVS 1, um, uh, Alpha 3. They were just, like, superior in that game. And, like, I was like, oh, I'm never going to be able to beat these guys, you know, or even get on their level. Um, so I was kind of intimidated at the scene. But then as I, like, got to know people and started playing more and more and just realized, like, you know, anybody can lose in any fighting game. All it takes is dedication and time. And if you're willing to learn, like, the best way I always tell everybody who's just starting out, you have to lose to learn. If you don't lose, you'll never learn anything. Like, you just go, oh, I can't beat this guy, I got beat 5-0. Oh, no, just keep, keep playing. Figure the match out, you know, uh, and you'll get better. But, yeah, overall, like, the scene was really intimidating. But, like I said, as time moved on, I got more comfortable. Today's scene, um, I think back then, the scene was more about, I'm only looking out for myself. But now I think that with Street Fighter 4, especially with Street Fighter 4, and the media attention that it's getting, um, and the players that it's bringing out, young players, old school players, uh, I think it's more, more user friendly now. And I think it's more, uh, 
I guess, tolerable, I guess you could say. But it's easier to get into. It's a lot easier, because now if you get into the scene, you're not just gonna go, oh, this young guy, uh, uh, he's playing Sea Viper and um, he's trash, he'll trash him. Nowadays, a lot of the newcomers are beating the, um, the more professional guys. You know, you got Wolf Crone who came out of nowhere. Uh, um, what is it, Enthal, he came out of nowhere. Yeah, and Dr. Chaos too, yeah, oh man, that guy. He's, he went from playing at University of Pinball, scrubby Ken, trash Ken, right? He didn't know what he was doing. He played with us, he played with other people on the East Coast. Uh, us, um, mainly like when he first started, the Philly crew, uh, me, uh, Julian Robinson, Josh Wong, uh, Brahim Keys, Philly One, who's no longer here, he's in Korea, a real good friend of ours. Um, and a lot of other people from Jersey, you, uh, Kazi, uh, everyone, like everyone from like the East Coast, New York players, he played all those guys, and man, he just blew up. He had from, went from being the scrubbiest kin to the best kin in the world now. Like he went the whole Evo using just kin, and nobody else can say that. You know, nobody else can say that. All respect to Mr. KOF, he did try, he's a really good kin, but chaos is kin. So he came a long way too. He, um, but when Street Fighter 4 came out, it just brought like a whole new life. Like a lot of people said, oh, I can get into this game, or I can learn this. They brought a lot of the old school characters back. Um, they started streaming. I don't know who started streaming, but whoever started that, God bless you. I swear, yo, you are, a, whoever did that is amazing. Because ever since streaming came out, the fighting game scene got more uh, media based. And they wanted more people to get into it. Like, oh man, this is on stream now. So the internet, people are cheering, going crazy. Um, you know, uh, Capcom is actually paying attention to the fighting game scene. Before, you had to like write letters on the internet and like pray that you know somebody from the executives would actually listen. But now, a lot of the Capcom games um, and other companies like a lot of the other companies like Namco, they're actually listening to the fans now. Like before, they bring out a game, they'll say, "Hey, uh, they'll write a poll." Like for example, when Dudley got put in the game, they had a poll saying which which is your favorite character, or which character you want to see most. So now it's all up to the fans. Shout outs, um, <laughs> uh, shout outs to all my friends in Cali. Y'all know, y'all know who y'all are. Much love to y'all. Shout outs to all my East Coast friends who I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, all of Philly, all of New Jersey, all of New York. Um, nobody personal, cause I got love for everybody. You know? But thanks, guys. Yo, you see these presents? Huh? Yeah, Yo, you see these? Yo, you see this though? I need this too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got that? Yeah. 
the break ain't never seen three cakes before. Yeah, the break ain't never seen three cameras before either. <laughs> but we in there. Oh. Mine says if you all couldn't read it, nothing fancy about it. Um, this is supposed to be for Fran. Man. Uh, but he's not here, so. Uh, so it's not for Fran anymore. So it's for me. Ow! I'm a deer! It's literally right there. Look, what did you say? I'm a deer! Let's go. That one died. You're gonna butcher this cake. <laughs> We, I got we got a remote that's type one diabetes. I don't trust that you will. Uh, yeah, he's he, right. He, he's he right. for about a year. He takes his med medication. <laughs> Would you get this cake? We need a spoon 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 Standing strong, standing strong again. Low forward, spiral arrow, FADC, down jab, down roundhouse. I'm sorry, can, can I start over here? Start up, start up. Standing strong, standing strong. Low forward, spiral arrow, FADC, down jab, standing strong, crouching fierce. Standing strong, far standing strong. Can, uh, spiral arrow, FADC. Standing jab. S standing fierce. Cannon strike. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four. Oh, whoa. Did I really just say that? Yeah. Six, seven, eight, four. <laughs> I'm done with this English. I don't even speak this language. <laughs> Six, seven, nine, Japanese. ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen, thirteen hits. 13? That's a, that's a thick, thick ass combo for uh, this uh, Street Fighter game right there. Yeah. My turtle. And uh, it has stain, not stains, but like it has a brown spot on the stomach. Not because it's dirty, because the because of the friction that Ryder gave him. The turtle the turtle stayed in Ryder's house for eleven days. The reason I don't block is because, uh, <laughs> hi there. Um, come on, man. I try. I, I try to block. And I just blocked against Stafford. And I won. Uh, twenty. Uh, twenty-two. Yeah, I think I'm twenty. Yeah, twenty-two years old. My name is Marlon Pai, aka. Your name. <laughs> I hate my name. Kyo. Kyo. Kyo Lair. That's German. Okay. Um, my father is American. Okay. And uh, what else? My mother is Japanese. I'm actually fully Japanese, but I just got a stepfather. That's why I'm here. Where are you from? Japan. I actually only started to get into the Street Fighter 4 very recently. I, I was strictly Guilty Gear player. Um, Ryder chose me for the win Winter Brawl team. I was I joined the FIC team, FIC team as a ringer, and uh, I just kind of stuck with them. So that's I guess that's the that's the turning point. I I, I still do play Guilty Gear though. I like that game. Love that game. <laughs> this? Yeah. This is electric cigarette. Um, I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even making. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's Sako, but by the way, Sako did not influence me to play Cami. I. Are you serious? Every, everybody thinks about it. Everybody thinks that. Um, Sako's God's Garden happened after. I switched my character. Oh, that's the studying, definitely. Um, studying of what? Studying of everything. So studying of matchups. I think American players like to hide the ultimate things they find out themselves. Japanese people always go to 2chan, always, and, and share the love. Um, 
Daigo, uh, all the top, top players actually are involved in the threads and they spill out everything they have also. So that helps and Japanese people can be educated by very good commentators on matches. By the way, all, most of the knowledge I have are through commentary in uh, Japanese matches like God's Garden, all those things. Um, knowing, knowing Japanese helps a lot uh, to know the game, seriously. Just, uh, Shout out to Jerry's players like Ryder, KZ, myself, Kazi, for doing this. Thank you. Um, Pukabuki. By the way, Pukabuki is my favorite word to say these days. Yes. Pukabuki. Pukabuki. Okay. Everybody say this. Pukabuki. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it sounds godlike. My name's Ryan Halverson. I'm 21 years old from New Jersey. And uh, in the Street Fighter community, I go by the tag Ryder. Able, just able. Well, in casuals, I play, I'll mess with anybody in casuals, but in tournament, I will almost never use anybody besides Able. Uh, I started playing Third Strike here, actually, just casually, probably about four years ago, roughly. I played Third Strike a lot, actually, but I never entered a tournament or anything like that. I just played for fun. And then when Street Fighter 4 came out, I started entering tournaments within the first couple weeks and winning, actually. Until, until New York came here, and then that's when that's when it became more difficult. So, tournament tournament wise, I've only been playing since Street Fighter Four. The first time I came to the break, the the dance game scene or Bamani, whatever you want to call it, DDR, uh, was ridiculous. There was a there was a free Friday night tournament for DDR, and there was probably about 50 people that entered. So when I when I came here, it was a Friday night, and you could barely move in here. This was six years ago. Now the scene has died a little bit, especially for that game. But at that time, that was like that was the biggest thing in the arcade. I love it. I love it. Like, uh, I actually worked here up until recently, and I, I was kind of forced to quit because of my other job, you know, make, make more money over there, and they need me to have more availability. So I, I had to quit, and I was pretty, I was pretty sad when I quit. Um, Chris, the owner of Eight on the Break, he doesn't make much money off of this at all. You know, Break Stake Special is four dollars. He probably makes a dollar fifty off of each one he sells. Um, no, the profit, the profit is actually really small. The electricity bill is huge. It costs so much money to buy new games, so he's he's keeping the break open as almost like a charity to the community. So I think I think he deserves a lot of a lot of respect just for keeping it open. He doesn't have to do that. The first tournament where I actually made money off this game was it was at a bowling alley, uh, no no, uh, billiards in Milltown, Milltown Billiards. It was about 20 people entered. It was about three or four days until the game was out for only about a week. I won. I won. As I actually met KDZ there. We developed a rivalry that day. But now we're not, now we're teammates, so that's good. Uh, I played Ryu at the time. Yeah. I actually started with Zangief off the bat, then I went to Ryu pretty quickly, and then uh, switched to Able eventually. Slowly, slow transition to Able, now I just use Able. I play about 23 and a half hours a day. Um, no, actually, when the, when the game came out, I had a lot more free time, so I played a lot. Played probably uh, four or five hours a day originally. And, and, you know, before tournaments and stuff like that, we, we tend to play more. Every now and again, though, I need to take a break from the game just to kind of get a grip on reality and make sure I'm doing okay in school, make sure I'm doing fine at work, I'm getting enough sleep. So every now and again, I'll take, I'll take a pretty significant break. And then when I come back to the game, it's, it's more fun again, you know. When you, play, when you play over and over again, it starts to feel more like a job than a game. Like, I started playing the game to have a good time with it, so I don't want to... I don't want it to turn into something that I feel like is work, you know what I mean? At that point in time, it's not fun. For me, anyway. We are going to season's beating. What have you been doing to prepare? Um, me, me and Marlon Pye, a teammate of mine, we've been playing a lot of casuals. I've been playing different matchups on Xbox Live, specifically trying to play people who uh, give me a hard time, playing able bad matchups, just refreshing different matchups. Um, I mean, the, there's so many good good competition on the East, on the East Coast, specifically, so I'm pretty solid at most matchups. However, the West Coast guys, they play some different characters, and there's going to be some, some European guys there, Japanese guys there, so I have to be prepared for everything. However, um, right now I'm doing full-time school, full-time full -time work, so I'm, I'm going to just have a good time. I mean, I, I do want to place, would be fantastic, do as be do best I can, but uh, it's more of just, just going to be the, for fun for me. I would like to make top eight. Um, there's a couple people that I think could be a lot of trouble if I run into them. Um, Justin Wong plays Rufus, of course. That's something I always want to avoid. Uh, aside from that, the only other matchups that I'm worried about, Fei Long is, is a rough one. Rufus, Cammies, Fei Long. That's about it. Other than that, I'm not too worried about anybody. Daigo, but yeah.
Yeah, free. <laughs> it's the rider. Hey, can you give us an example? Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. Basically, and I believe it was Sanford, who every time I land a step kick, stand fierce, change of direction, cancel into crouch fierce, ultra. Uh, I think it was Sanford who just started yelling rider, <laughs> and then that that kind of kind of stuck after that. And actually, now everybody will say that occasionally if I'm playing and I hit the combo, or just for no apparent reason, more often than not. But that that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool, actually. Um. Dominion, Dominion had my back there. He was actually probably the only New York player who was, who was actually on our side for that match. So that was cool too. At Evo, this this little this actually is a 40 year old Hispanic woman roughly comes up to me, and she, she's got a heavy accent. She's like she's like, Ryder, Ryder. She's like, my my son. He he watched the break every Tuesday. He watched the break every Tuesday. I tell him to go to go to bed. Go to bed, Daniel. And he comes up to me. He he says. He says, Mom, the stream, the stream. And then I'm here from the other room. He goes, Ryder. And then after, after she says that, this little kid like spawns from behind her leg. And he's just kind of, he's just kind of looking up at me like. And he asked me a couple questions. And I'm just like, oh, oh boy. Um, at, the, at the time, I just, you know, I took a picture with him. We did like flex and everything. But I'm probably not the best person to idolize. If you're going to idolize somebody in the community, pick somebody more wholesome than me, I, I would say it would be a good idea. But hey, that's, that's cool. That's cool. It makes me feel good. Statement, or is it a way of life? And are you wearing sleeveless right now? Sleeveless T-shirts? You mean <laughs> the sleeveless tee? Uh, fashion statement? No, no, no. Way of life? Yes, certainly a way of life. Uh, the sleeveless tee has been my staple, I guess. When, I know it's like when I when I wear a regular T-shirt, if I'm not wearing a sleeveless tee, the, the stream the stream monsters will say, "What the hell's going on? Ryder, why aren't you wearing a sleeveless?" So I actually feel like my execution, my my general, when I have airflow to the biceps. I can kind of, I get more mental power, my mix-ups are better, everything works better, so the sleeveless tees are the way of life. <laughs> Occasionally I'll play, I'll play, if the, if the tournament's small, it's a good time, like uh, Katamari, of course you guys know Katamari used to run the, week, the bi-weeklies, and I would just go up there and hang out, I was crashing there every, the, at the night anyway, so I used to play, uh, the first time I actually beat Dr. Chaos, who was like one of my, one of my biggest idols in the fighting game community, uh, I used to play, because I, I started playing at University of Pinball, so the, the, it was like Demon Heo, Philly One, and Dr. Chaos, like they, they held that shit down, you, nobody could beat those guys. So when, I, when the first time I beat Dr. Chaos, I was, uh, I think a lot of people are discouraged when they when they first enter like a fighting game tournament. It's kind of an aggressive community. Like people will, there's a lot of yelling, a lot of shit talking. And I think a lot of people get discouraged by that. Uh, to, to people who are discouraged to get in the community because of that reason, I gotta tell you, just ignore it. Just ignore it. It's, a, it's just part of the game. Everybody likes, everybody's loud. It just, it just kind of gets the, it just gets the hype up. So don't be discouraged about people talking shit. And this and that and if people you know if, if you're succeeding people are telling you oh that's cheap that's cheap don't even think twice if people are calling your strategy cheap it's probably a good thing shout outs to KZ, Marlon Pie, uh, all of New Jersey, East Coast uh, no more shout outs for you Marlon Pie. I'm sorry shout, shout outs to everybody from New Jersey love, love you guys love you guys My name is Philip Christopher Atkinson. My handle is KDZ, Kid Disaster, known by many things. Uh, and my age is 24. I am 24 years old. I am from Piscataway, which is a hop, skip, and a jump away from Benelli. My Street Fighter 4 character is Abel and Rufus. I interchange between the two, depending on uh, who you're worst against. I've been playing fighting games since uh, I guess I was 15. So right now we're pushing on nine years. Yeah, I've been playing fighting games for a long time now. I've been coming to the break since I was 10 years old. That's when I moved in close by uh, to Piscataway. Um, actually, uh, we didn't realize that this arcade was here when we moved here. Uh, so randomly, one time, I went with my, uh, my mother to the Filipino restaurant just a few places uh, down, Alex's. And I saw that it was an arcade here. As a little 10-year-old kid. I was like, oh, my God, there are video games. Holy. Um, the farthest I've traveled for a tournament legitimately would probably be uh, France. I just came back from there in March. It's pretty good over there. Nice people, nice place, nice city, great food. <laughs> it was a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament, and I picked whatever character I wanted. I got perfected. <laughs> Almost twice, but I, he had to block something. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do so well, but being how competitive I am, okay, 
That's the thing. You guys don't know how competitive I am. I was that little kid who was in the arcade, and a guy had a 50 win streak, and everyone didn't want to play him except for me. And I was, I didn't know how to beat him. I didn't know why he was beating me, but I would just keep putting coins in. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fucking beat this guy eventually. It's going to be a biased question because I'm basically surrogate family to the owner. He, he basically, since I was a little kid, let me do whatever I wanted because I guess I don't really like me. So... I've been able to run behind the counter, just go around, do whatever I want. Um, so this place is like, it's like a, another family to me. Love this place. But that's the type of person that the owner is. Not a lot of arcades. You won't get that in a lot of places. <laughs> yes, I did start the uh, tournaments at 8 in the break. Um, well, there are tournaments before this, but I started the Street Fighter 4 scene uh, at 8 in the break. I started it because... I knew starting at this game, I wanted to get the strongest players from the tri-state to all play because that was the only way to get better, to play against these people. Um, because I was uh, basically, I'm really good friends with Chris, the owner, I, uh, he just let me run the tournament. He didn't care. He said, oh, you want to run the tournament? Tell me the day. Asked him the day. And I picked Tuesday, of course, because Bison, you got to do it. If you guys don't know, uh, the Street Fighter movie has a famous line where Bison says, because it was Tuesday. Might not make sense to you guys but that's why we have it here. Look that up. <laughs> I was basically bringing a lot of the equipment. I was getting a lot of friends to bring the equipment um, uh, or help me out with the equipment that I didn't have. But week by week, we were trying to figure out what to do. And eventually, I got on the ball, figured out where we can get TVs from, figured out who could bring systems the most reliably. Um, and then the problem was I couldn't seem to run a tournament and play in it without playing extremely poorly. So one of my best friends, Mike, uh, he stepped up and he said, you know what, I'll run the tournament, you can play, so you can do your best. And so I let him, I let him run the, uh, the brackets at the tournament, and since then, I've been the one trying to get players to come in, and I've been the one trying to plan for bigger events in the future. Uh, the reason why this tournament is successful is simple. We're the only weekly tournament that started from the beginning and hasn't stopped since. Uh, we've been here from the first week of Vanilla to now, uh, there is no other tournament that could say that they've had such a consistent uh, base of players. We've had hard times. Let's, let's, not, let's not kid ourselves. Last year, uh, about this time, we were getting maybe 8 to 12 people. And we finished so early that I'd bring them to play bowling. We'd all go do something else fun. But um, the reason why it's successful is because the success of the game has caused a lot of people to want to play and practice against good players. So the tournament here... It's pretty easy to reach because of the, uh, the nearby highways and the, the subway. It costs only $10 to play, and that's all, less than any other tournament out there. And it's a great environment. You can get food. You don't got to go anywhere. It's, it's actually a really nice place to be. And finally, the people that come, we've all become friends. We, maybe we have our little factions, our little teams, or our statewide uh, our rivalries, but we've all become pretty decent friends here, like that guy. I would like more space. The thing about this tournament is that we're running it. He's, le he's just letting me run it, but it's difficult to move things around like giant pool tables to gain access to more space. Um, if I had more space, then I'd be able to get more of anything I needed from TVs to, uh, to systems to whatnot. Uh, also, to help Mike out, a PA system would be pretty good, but we have one of those. We just don't give it to him. Nobody would be able to pay attention if he, uh, if he had a mic for, uh, for four hours. In fighting games, my skill is always been from day one to now it's been my ability to decide how the opponent is feeling and thinking I might not be able to read exactly what they're going to do next but I can figure out what state of mind they're in and if I can figure that out I can figure out the type of player they are and the type of moveset they're going to use against me and it's been pretty much universally successful across three, four different games on three, four different platforms and across three or four different genres. Okay, the differences between Soul Calibur and Street Fighter, you have to understand that uh, Street Fighter is a 2D game with a very limited amount of options. It doesn't give you the free running that you can get in a Soul Calibur. So Soul Calibur, um, angle, distance, a lot of things matter. What side you're on, things like that. Uh, because both of you can move in and out of a 360-degree uh, axis. So... On top of that, everyone has a universal counter option. They have a, the ability to negate whatever you're doing by parrying it or repelling it. So it causes, it causes your offense to have to be more... You have to have a better plan with your offense. Because in this game, a lot of times you can have a feeling about what you want to do and then go through with it. And you won't get hurt 
too badly for it. In that game, if you just do whatever you want, you're not going to kill anybody. You're eventually going to die and lose to a better player. I, I became the number one player in the country in Soul Calibur 4. I remained that way for like a full year. I was the captain of the, uh, the US team. The reason why I was in France was because we had a team tournament worldwide and everyone went there. It was actually the biggest Soul Calibur event, one of the biggest fighting game events um, that I've ever seen. But I was appointed the captain of that team, the team that we sent over there. So I, for a good while, I remained at the king of that game. <laughs> Admire. <laughs> he admires nobody but himself. You gotta, you gotta understand something about myself. The, the thing is, when I admire, when I admire somebody, it's because they're so much better than me that that's like some sort of sur surreal goal that I'm trying to reach. I don't admire anybody. I respect players. <laughs> um, if you, if you want to ask me who I respect, I respect all of the players that uh, that come to the break because a lot of them are top players all across the tri-state area, including the country. Um, the player I respect the most right now is probably Van Geef. That guy scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Best player on the East Coast right now is probably either Arturo Sanchez or Sanford Kelly. Thanks, um, Arturo Sanchez, he plays whatever character he wants and he makes it work. He finds a way to make characters like Rose and Dalsim, who aren't traditionally top tier characters, he finds a way to make them viable to the point where he's one of the best players in the country. He's beaten so many people. He barely lost to Daigo and he beat him last year. The reason why Sanford Kelly would be one of the best is because he takes the top characters and he plays them to the best of their, uh, the best they can possibly be played, uh, at, least, at least technically, at least technically because he's very good at uh, execution. He's very good at uh, never messing up. That's, that's what his strength is. So you have to be a certain level to even be able to fight with him. And that's, that makes it difficult for anybody. The one thing I would wanna say is we have a great community going. This, is, this might be the biggest fighting game community that has ever been for a single game. Uh, we're getting thousands upon thousands of people playing at major tournaments, which is, Incredible. I, people who didn't play tournaments before this don't realize how big that is. Before, a 200-man tournament was crazy. Now, a 200-man tournament is an average, like, bi-yearly. Um, so, the one thing I'd want to say is it's up to you guys to keep this community together and not to give up on it. I've seen communities crumble. I've seen communities stand back up. And sometimes when majors pass by in this community, a lull happens where people don't play as much until the next major comes up. And hopefully, what happened in Vanilla is at the end of the, at the, near the end of its life, people stop going to tournaments altogether. And hopefully, that doesn't happen for this game because that's the easiest way to, for a scene to die without people realizing it, waiting for the next game and not wanting to go to tournaments. So, support your scene, uh, come down to any tournaments you want, ours is here weekly. You have Guard Crush in, uh, in New York City. You got Tech Throw Thursdays bi-weekly in uh, Philly. So we got someplace all tri-state. This guy's trying to be in the shot.
San Diego representing Mad Cats, and I'm here at uh, CZ Beatings. What are you here for? I'm here to support the community. Uh, my name is David Hines. Uh, my handle is Dog Tanyan. Um, I'm 26 and I'm from London in the United Kingdom. My name is Sola. Uh, my handle is Burn Your Bra and I'm from, uh, originally from Minnesota but I live in Texas. <laughs> uh, my name is James Chen. Uh, I'm known in the community as Jay Chenzor. Uh, I choose not to reveal my age because I'm old. <laughs> so, and I normally play in the Southern California community. So. I'm about probably, I would say, five months, four months shy of playing for about 20 years now. I've basically been playing since the original Street Fighter II. Um, I got involved in the community mainly uh, through uh, the news group, All Games SF2, and it just kind of kept growing from there when Shoryuken became popular. Well, actually, even before then, I was writing combo facts, and Shoryuken.com came around and I started making combo videos and such. So. I've been, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time now, and just since then I've never stopped being involved in the community. Cami, <laughs> has to be Cami, and, and shout outs to uh, Jessica Gona, the con artist who made this shirt, actually, she's really talented, this is an awesome shirt, so, yeah. Um, the reason why I actually played Cami was, um, it started from Super Turbo, actually. Um, back when Super Turbo was around, I noticed that nobody used Cami. Everyone said she was horrible. She's, she's pretty much a bottom tier character. So I made it a mission upon myself to try to get good at Cammy. And so I just kept playing Cammy and I, I basically became known as like one of the top Cammy players in the country for ST. And since then, you know, I just, I've just had this bond with Cammy, you know. So every time a new game comes out with Cammy, I just feel like uh, I have to pick her because it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, I have to represent Cammy, so. <laughs> it's so different now than it used to be and actually I mean there's kind of like a good side and a bad side about it too because originally when the community first started it was almost like rival gangs you know the arcades like oh I'm from this arcade you know we're better than you scrubs and so it was a very aggressive community it was a lot of rivalries people hated each other and most top players like literally would not talk to you until you started being able to beat them there was no hand-holding, nobody gave any advice, people wouldn't tell you any tricks. If they hit you with the same trick ten times in a row, they would never tell you. They wouldn't care. They would just keep doing it to you over and over again. So nowadays, the community is so much about information sharing, you know, between YouTube and Shoryuken.com forums and, you know, even like as a top player, when you beat people, you're like, oh, you know, I keep hitting you with this, you should be careful of that, but good game, shake hands, you know, we're all friendly now. And that's good though, because it definitely makes the community more welcoming. It makes it so a lot of people can get into the scene a lot easier. And we need to do that, because before, everyone was playing just because they wanted to win. Now we need to get everyone to play because we want the scene to grow. And so the, the, the friendliness is better for that. When I first started, um, I just used to be a contributor to the Alt Games SF4 news group. And then from there, I started writing combo facts. And that was probably my main form of contribution for a while, was the facts that I wrote. And then after that, I moved on to making combo videos when Shoryuken.com started coming around. I started just putting up combo videos and just posting a lot on the forums. I was always one of the people who was willing to type long novels on trying to help people on how to play. And uh, these days, uh, I mostly, for a while, I've just been helping the community out. I, I'm, I'm like one of the secondary tier on, on, on EVO staff, so I try to help out EVO as much as I can. Uh, I, I help set that up, I help run that and do a lot of work there. And, uh, and somehow these days I got roped into commentary, which is why my voice is gone. Because for the last two days I've been screaming into the microphone because there's been some crazy stuff going on this weekend. So yeah, so nowadays uh, strangely enough, people seem to know me for commentary more than more than a lot of other things now. Um, the hardest thing about it, uh, I just wrote actually a, a, a post about this, uh, about like comparisons with Street Fighter and poker. And uh, one of the nice things about poker is that it's easy to play. And so it's easy to get people to draw and they don't know all the little details about it. So they can just come in and go, oh, I'm all in, whee, and I'm having fun. The problem with Street Fighter is it's so much harder to get into than poker. You can't sit down at a joystick and kind of know what you're doing. 
you can't, I mean, it's really hard to pick up. And so I think as a community, what we need to do is become really better about training new players, welcoming new players, and getting more people comfortable to sitting down and picking up a joystick and going at it. Because that's the hardest thing about Street Fighter right now is that when you play against, like if you're a poker player and you find yourself at a table with Johnny Chan, you can play with him. You can play with him and you can suck out against him or whatever like that. But if I sit down at a, if I don't know how to play and I sit down with Alex Vai, he's just gonna destroy me like nobody's business, you know? And that's the tricky thing about Street Fighter. We have to figure out a way how to craft players from basically no, no, no idea what they're doing to a level where they can compete. And I think that's going to get the scene to grow. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I'm an arcade player. I've been an arcade player my whole life. I was just, I'm, I'm in the ST tournament here, which is on the cabinet. And I just told uh, Damdai, like, there's nothing like playing Super Turbo on a cabinet. It's just like the most wonderful feeling. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the sturdiness of the cabinet so you can just like mash things, you know? But, you know, even saying that much, you know, as sad as it is for me to say that arcades are pretty much dying at this point. I mean, honestly, like I could go on about for like two hours about the arcade scene. Like arcades can survive. I just think they need to change their mentality of what an arcade is. And, uh, but I won't get into details about that. But um, so I'm sad to see arcades dying. But at the same time, having console, having online opens it up to a lot more people. And I mean, there's a lot of players here who have only played online and they're really good. So it's actually kind of exciting in that way. I mean, like I said, we need to draw new players in there and online console is gonna be the way to do it. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, like, I've been in the scene for so long, you know, almost every player I've seen has kind of come into the scene. Like, I've never gone into the scene and already had an Alex Valle to like try to emulate it. I still remember when Alex Valle was new to the scene, you know? So um, it's hard for me to say. Uh, there's a lot, of, there's a great deal of players that I respect. I mean, and I respect pretty much like all the top players. I mean, I don't consider myself a top player at all by any stretch of the means. So I always respect guys like Vi and, and John Choi, you know, and now, you know, obviously Justin Wong and Combo Fiend and everybody. I mean, all the players that are doing really well and can play to that high level, I respect greatly. Um, but if I did have to name someone that, you know, when I first started the scene that I looked up to, it would probably be TZW actually, because he was a combo video maker, he was the world's first combo video maker making guile combos on VHS tapes that people would pirate around. I think I have like a third generation VHS tape, you can't even see the life bars, they're all blurry and stuff like that. So, you know, he's the guy who made me want to get into combos, because it was just so much fun. So. Uh, my name is Justin Wong. I am um, 24 years old, and I used to live in New York, but I moved to California recently. And my handle is um, from Evil Geniuses, Evil Genius Justin Wong. Um, I've been playing fighting games probably for 10 plus years, and I started at this local arcade called Chinatown Fair in New York City. And you know, I was just a casual player, just playing regular Marvel's Capcom One. And, you know, and I see all these good players, and I was like, hey, you know, they're pretty good. So I just started playing with them, and then they introduced me to tournaments. And from there, I just kept going to tournaments to get better. And I wanted to see, like, how big can, can this take me. Um, the first character I played in Vanilla Street Fighter 4 was uh, Chung Lee. And at the time, I was juggling from Chung Lee, Akuma, Gaio, Rufus, like, Abel, like, all these characters. So every tournament, I picked a different character, but when it came to, like, West Coast versus East Coast, I picked Rufus and that was the character that helped me get so far in the beginning so I just kept staying from Rufus to now. Um, the, I like my character Rufus because he's a new character one and I picked him because at first a lot of people were picking like Ryu and Ken and I, I wanted the game to be strong and no one was playing new characters at first so I kind of want to play new characters and, and show like you know there's diversity in this game. And, but the only thing I don't like about the character is that I guess he is definitely kind of cheap. <laughs> not gonna lie, he's, he's definitely a cheap character. And because of his dive kicks, he's definitely like, a lot of people complain about him a lot. Um, 
I've been preparing for season beatings with uh, my teammate um, Marn. He's also from Evil Geniuses, and we just been practicing for like the last two weeks of like certain matches that we're not comfortable with, and we just been grinding out just for this tournament because I know there was a lot of good players here and a lot of like potential to make a lot of money here also. For this tournament, I always want to come in first place, so. I think my chance of getting first place is pretty high now because um, Andre from New York City, he put Daigo in loser, so it gives me a really good chance of winning this tournament right now, actually. Um, I think the furthest for I traveled to a tournament was um, Australia. There was like the evolution of Australia. They invited me. I didn't pay a dime, but they invited me to a tournament called OHN6. Um, it was for uh, just Street Fighter in general. It wasn't Street Fighter 4 yet. It was like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Mars Capcom 2, games like that. I came in first, so that's good. So like, it was a free trip, a free experience to go to Australia, you know? You can't say you've been to Australia so many times or ever in your life. So, but other than that, I go to Japan a lot. I've been there seven times already. And it's definitely a fun experience there because it's a really good practice there because all the best players are in Japan. I think the difference between Japanese and American players is that since there's no money to be made in tournaments in Japan, they don't really hide things, hide little tricks. They just go all out every single time. So because of that, they learn from each other and you know they don't mind just like showing off their latest tricks and not caring because that's how they get better. But in America, since there's a lot of money to be made in these tournaments, people like to hide stuff from other players and that's why we don't progress as fast as Japan. I think the most memorable experience that kind of like boosted up everything was the whole GameStop Street Fighter 4 tournament. Like ever since that, like I won, like my Facebook is so full now, my Twitter is so full now. And like I was on the GameStop TV so everyone comes up to me like in supermarkets or if I go to a restaurant or anywhere like it's a big area, people like I always get noticed. So I think that's probably the most memorable experience and the best moment. I guess my biggest accomplishment was to be on a TV show, <laughs> the WCG Ultimate Gamer Season 2. That was a pretty good accomplishment, even though I didn't win. It was just like, it's, it's one of a lifetime experience that you can never be on TV, one, and also doing these real life challenges and just, you know, hanging out with like really cool people. So that's probably like the best experience ever. You might not know him, but the person that got me into this is named Eddie Lee. He's like the East Coast legend before I came to the scene in, in Chinatown. He was the god in like Marvel 1. He was the god in like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Like all these old school games before he retired. And he got he was the one that gave me a reality check because when I when I was in high school I thought I was the best in Marvel's Capcom 1. You know, my play until five o'clock at a curfew. And when I got older I get to stay out later because he came out later and he just like beat me 50 straight. I was like, oh word? So I was very, definitely inspired by him. And he, he made me want to get better, and, to, and he's basically the reason why I'm here now. Um, for new players, if you want to compete and you want to get better, you should always travel. Don't rely on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. It gets you but so far. You want to travel, get some experience, get some of that um, so you, know, you don't choke, you don't get nerve shocked. You just want to go to tournaments, meet people, network, play casuals, you know, play, play with people that you think that there's bad matches for you so you can learn and basically just support the community. Just think for the fighting game community, just keep supporting the scene and you know, anything is possible. Anyone could become the best as long as you work on it, as long as you want it. So just keep playing, keep supporting the community, go to tournaments, watch the streams, do some research and you know, hopefully you'll get there one day. Good luck to everyone there. Uh, uh, oh, oh, the game will be special in the corner. Okay, uh, my name is David Hines. Uh, my handle is Dog Tanyan. Um, I'm 26 and I'm from London in the United Kingdom. I've been playing fighting games since I was wee high. Um, only recently, last couple of years, I've taken it seriously. Um, in London, we have quite a good fighting community. Um, I kind of watched, spectated for quite a while before I actually got involved. Um, I got to know some of the better players and they kind of taught me how to play properly. I played El Fuerte from the start and I'm still maining him now. Um, crazy decision. Um, didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, before the game came out and they announced El Fuerte, um, I knew he was going to be different. Just by looking at him, I thought this is going to be an interesting character. Mexican wrestler, lots of throws, fast, 
I know how they, they are in real life. I kind of thought this is going to be a fun character. Um, I don't like playing as characters that everyone picks. So I, I stay away from like Ryu and Ken, um, those kind of characters. So for me, it really it suited my play style. And the fact that no one else wanted to play as him, it was perfect. Um, it's been a bit of a struggle, um, but I enjoy the challenge. And I get a lot of respect for remaining with the character for so long. Um, yeah, I lost to Ryder, uh, an Apple player. Actually lost really, really badly. Um, but I ran it back afterwards, and it, it, was, it was quite good, actually. Um, I, I learned something, unfortunately, a little bit too late. But that's one of the reasons I come to tournaments. You learn something new each time. Um, I lost to a Viper player as well, and I lose consistently to Viper. I don't think I should. Um, it's, uh, it's a matchup I'm, I'm not familiar with either, so it's something I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Yeah, um, OK, so, so basically, I'm here on holiday. Um, I'm staying in New York for three to four weeks. Um, I'm just changing job, so it's the ideal opportunity to take some time out to um, go on holiday. I don't have to book any time off work, so I'm here for a long time. Um, I, I saw at Caesars Beating was around this time, so I, I purposely put my holiday around here. Um, that worked out quite nicely. Um, I've been talking to Starnab quite a lot in France, and I knew he wanted to come. He expressed that to me last time we met. And so I said, look, let's just go together, why not? He's, he's an outstanding world-class player, um, something I'm not quite there yet. But um, I thought I'd come along anyway for the experience, it's fun. Um, I'm good friends with a lot of the players here, so for me it's a good chance to meet everyone again and you know, see how everyone's doing. We recently just had a big tournament in London, um, SVB Super Versus Battle, um, and that was really, really good. We had uh, Daigo come over and PR Balrog made a visit as well, which was good. Um, but typically speaking, we don't have a lot of tournaments. Um, it's not something we, we really have in our scene at the moment, so I'm still kind of fresh on the scene, like learning a lot about uh, fighting game mechanics in general. Um, I'm trying to pick up and absorb as much information from the top players as I can every time I play. Um, yeah, I, I, I react quite well. Um, that's why the, the speed of the character suits me. So my reaction times are pretty, pretty good. Um, and yeah, I, I like to think outside the box. So I guess I do things they don't necessarily expect. I try and think a couple of steps ahead as to what they're going to do. Um, and it works in my favor. Um, it's just certain matchups that doesn't work. So I've got to work on that. A couple of the guys back home, in particular F-Word and Affy, um, we kind of all started together in SF4 kind of around the same time. And they've, they've come leaps and bounds. They're, they're really, really good players now. Like, they're up there. Like, I really think they should come to the US and, and test their skills. Um, so naturally, I, I respect them uh, a lot. I, I hold them really high up. Um, in terms of well-known players, um, Zach Bennett, he's incredible, really, really good. I respect these players in particular um, because they've taken, they've taken the game to the next, the next notch. They've taken it a, a notch up higher than the, what the UK has, I think, in terms of how seriously they take it. And it, it shows in, in their performance at tournaments. They're, they're really outstanding players. We're not too far behind them. In fact, it's only just a, a minimal amount. But um, I respect their whole community. They're, they take the game so seriously. And startups come here and proven that Europe is a force to be reckoned with. It's, it's made us all really proud. So yeah, it's good. I suggest for new players coming into the scene to just talk to a lot of the players. We're, we're all, most of us, the majority of us, are really, really friendly. Um, happy to give advice and talk to you. Um, just don't spend too much time watching videos or admiring the top players. It's OK to admire a top player and want to be like them, but don't just do that. Like, take, what it, take the steps to, to be as good and better than them. Your, your aim should always be to beat the best. Don't um, spend too much time online um, getting too much involved with the forums and the, the conversations that are happening there. It's, it's good just to, to get to know the players individually and personally and um, take as much information, like listen to what they're saying, because what they say, they know what they're talking about. And the moment you, you just listen to what they're doing and apply it to your game, you're going to notice your, your uh, ability increasing and your skills. And also enter as many tournaments as possible. I, I remember I used to go to the arcade and um, I used to watch Zach Bennett play Third Strike and I really wanted to be good at that game. I was too scared to play for a long, long time. I would just watch and watch. And um, eventually I just thought, you know what, let me just start playing this game. And playing him, you lose so quick, but you learn so fast. Like, it's, it's a give and take procedure. And I really recommend, don't be too scared to play. Just, just go for it. Just play as many people as you can. And saying hi back to the people back home. Uh, it's a shame you guys couldn't be here with me. Um, I'm not the best when it comes to representing the UK, but I did my best. Um, it'd be good if we could come Storm America at EVO 2011. Um, 
shout-outs to the El Fuerte fans, if there are any. Um, a couple, maybe. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Uh, thanks to everyone who's had me here. Everyone's been really welcoming, very friendly. Um, yeah, it's been good. And look forward to seeing everyone again. My name is Ryan Gutierrez, a.k.a. Gutex. I am 27. I'm from L.A. Oh, I've been playing fighting games since I was maybe like 9 or 10. And uh, I got involved in the community because I was fortunate enough to go to Cal Poly Pomona when they had EVO there the first year, which was uh, EVO 2003. So um, I kind of stumbled in. Uh, my friend was like, hey, there's this big Street Fighter tournament because we'd been playing, um, you know, casually. Uh, even though I used to read about um, Street Fighter tournaments and everything when I was a kid, I used to read, like, James Chen's yeah. FAQs. <laughs> you know, I would read about, you know, Watson and Vaya and all those dudes. Um, so I, was, I just kind of stumbled upon it um, by chance. I played Balrog in Vanilla and got bored, got bored wanted to... Wanted to end it all, <laughs> and uh, now I play Rose, which, but I mean, I play Balrog in certain matches, but uh, I mostly play Rose because um, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. She puts the fun back into it. Balrog sucks. Yeah, Balrog sucks the life out of it for me. <laughs> for me. For me. Especially when I look at these other guys that are like way better with Balrog. I'm just like, how can I compete with that? <laughs> Can't even do these combos. <laughs> the very first tournament that I played in was a. Street Fighter 3 New Generations tournament at a video game store about five minutes from my house. And out of like 17 people or whatever, like I came in fourth and I was in like junior high. And you know, it was on an arcade cabinet in a video game store. I mean, I took the bus there, baby, you know, like I was a child. Now, I mean, now we take planes, we stay in hotels, we get taken out like VIP when we go when we go out. It's, I mean, they have to talk specifically about the event. There's like hundreds of people here. Um, there's it is now streamed live over the internet for thousands of people to watch and then troll in the stream. Um, gosh, what else? Um, oh, now the international players are flown out. Um, you know, we have Daigo and Momochi and Choco Blanca and, and Gamer B and Starnab and all these dudes come out to play. I mean, the world is, obviously, I guess the world has changed a lot and so Street Fighter benefits from that, um, from the technology. So now even what was once a very niche hobby is now a slightly larger niche hobby. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot more mainstream now. So, you know, we have like, sometimes there's girls here Okay, well, yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, obviously, like, I would read about Alex Valle and Mike Watson. I would just be like, damn, these dudes. I, I have Game Pro strategy guides with those dudes' pictures in them in my house, you know? <laughs> like, so, I mean, you know, that's, that's, I guess that's probably the beauty about Street Fighter, right? That, you know, obviously, I grew up, uh, in, I, I grew up as a kid, you know, into sports. So I would read about, you know, Michael Jordan, baseball players no way in hell that I could ever get to play those dudes, let alone like, you know, uh, know them on a first name basis or anything. Um, so that's really interesting. But um, I guess other, like, today, the players that I respect the most are probably the ones that like, I really feel do the work and put the time in. So I mean, of course, you know, Mike Ross, um, Art Arturo Sanchez, Justin, I mean, these dudes have really, really, really put the put in the time and effort. The business side of fighting games is like, outlook is it's cloudy. <laughs> outlook is hazy, right? I'm shaking my crystal ball. Sometimes I think it's only a matter of time before this shit pops off and then we all get to like, I don't know. Sometimes I think that this is, this is the new, um, like the next skateboarding or the next extreme sports or the next even sometimes it's the next hip-hop sometimes other times i'm like i'm wasting my life <laughs> what am i doing i could be doing anything else do the same process i mean business is the same no matter business is mostly the same no matter what field you're in 
So the skills and things that I do in this in Street Fighter or fighting games can apply to anything, specifically other competitive games such as StarCraft that have like, you know, a more mature audience. So I don't know, it's it's a tough call. Some days it's looking up, some days I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Um, Just being real. <laughs> Just say it. Okay. These are the rules. These are the ten like like that's yeah. Top ten. Yeah, Gutex top ten top ten tips for noobs. A don't ask anybody. I mean, okay, like if you're if we're if I'm chilling here, like you ask me whatever. But like don't fucking send like don't 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 send messages to top players asking for help if they don't know you. Is that fair? Like would you I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's not a good one. That's not a good one. I, I don't know. Like, you have to think about what you can do. It, it's like that JFK saying, right? Think not about what you can, or I don't know if that's JFK. Think not about what you can do for your country. Not, not what, what can your country do for you? I'm fucking it up. What can you do for your country? What can you do for the community? Are you, uh, you know, do you mod sticks? You know, do you have a sweet hookup at your job? You know, like, do you have something of value that you can bring the people that you want to help you? You have to, yeah, pretty much you have to prove your value, I guess. So that value comes from all types of places. So it can come from outside the game or, or you know, inside the game. But I mean, you pretty much have to like, you have to give before you receive, like anything in life. I don't know why anybody thinks this shit is any different than anything else. Like if you were, if you were trying to get into, you have to think of, okay, this is the perfect analogy. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is Skull and Bones. This is the yeah. Skull and Bones fraternity or whatever, the, the, the secret club that all the presidents come from, right? That's what, this, that's what this shit is. So if you were trying out for a fraternity, what would you do? Well, you would find, you would try to find one of these dudes that would take you under their wing. Well, how do you get them to do that? Well, you gotta fucking do shit for them. They tell you that they need a, they're, they're thirsty, you go get them a drink. They tell, oh, like, let me fucking, I don't know, give you a ride to a tournament. Oh, that's a good one. Giving rides to tournaments. If you have a car, you should be offering rides. Okay, when I, here's a perfect example. When I came in, the way that I came in was I saw a Urian, a third strike Urian combo video made by Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller. And the very first time I went to a tournament at Family Fun Arcade, I saw, I was like, you know, I was the new guy and I had heard that that dude was John D. And I went up to him and I said, hey, like, I was, I was the fanboy. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, nice to meet you. Like, your videos inspired me to play Urian. And like it was a very short conversation, and then after that, I, I didn't talk to him anymore because like you didn't seem like he wanted to be talked to. So like, but I guess I saw it on the internet, so <laughs> so I guess I'm guilty too. But I don't know, like it's with the access that people have, especially now because like we're all making, we all still have our regular Facebook accounts instead of Facebook fan pages. Um, it's 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 different. So. You have this sense that you know everybody because you're friends with them on Facebook, but like that that is again giving before receiving. So I don't know. And it, what's really weird is that it and this is why I think sometimes that this is going to be the next hip hop or the next skateboarding or whatever is because sometimes we are like celebrities. Sometimes and other times sometimes they sometimes they want to say what's up and chit chat, other times they want an autograph. But I'm the same dude. So we're like different things to different people depending on like I don't know what their what their experience was with us that we didn't even have a part in <laughs> you know like you know some of us don't produce content some of us are just playing on the streams right so like I don't know it's like it, it's just it's different like the internet like I mean it's different because like I like it you know but other players are like Rrr. you know other players like really don't give a fuck about it so with those guys like you don't have a chance of like really doing anything unless it's like in person and you see them. And even then it's still kind of weird because like, for example, yesterday in the five on five, right? Uh, you have this mass of people crowded around one little TV. And you know, like the Japanese player, I mean, Daigo and Momochi and, and Gamer B and Starnab and Choco, like, like they're there, like they're the celebrities. They are our guests. We don't have a, and when I say we, I don't mean like, I don't mean the organizers of the season's meetings. I mean, we as a scene don't have like an area 
for people to be like separated. It's like, okay, at this point, we are performers. If you're on stage, you're a fucking performer. If you're gonna play on stage at Evo, you're a performer because there are thousands of people watching and more watching at home. And there's no, there's no green room, there's no like warm up stations. So it's like, you're expected to perform at a high level, but you're not treated like that. You know, like you are treated like that by the people who are like asking you to sign autographs, but there is no, like we haven't had like a community culture shift to accommodate like the pressure of like performing on that level because there's a lot at stake. Even though on the other hand, there's nothing at stake. 10 grand on the line, who gives a fuck, right? If you had a real job, if you had a real job, what's 10 grand? If you went to college and then, you know, like had a, like a real nine to five career, 10 grand is like not, you know, that much money in the, long, in the grand scheme of things for the amount of time and effort and commitment that it takes to perform on that level. So, I mean, Daigo, that's why every time I hear about Daigo, like I heard that, okay, Daigo didn't play in the team tournament. I heard that he had to have like his own special section or whatever. Some people like to hate on that, but I think that's great because, especially um, when it comes to the, uh, the sponsorship thing with Mad Cats, I think that's awesome because if Daigo can, Daigo's just the first one to do it. Because now everybody sees, oh, well, if Daigo can get that, we can all get that if we can be on that level, if we, if we stay in this long enough. So, I mean, it's good. It's just, we're not there yet. <laughs> okay, so, the biggest problem that I have is that, it, like, I didn't start, I didn't wake up one day and, 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 and think, oh, you know what would be fucking dope? Is if I could just turn this shit into, like, something major. I didn't just wake up one day and then go down to the county clerk and like register DBA and was like, yeah, now I'm in the street fighter business. It wasn't like that. It was like, I started out by just doing a podcast. And then as that grew, um, I, had, I had to change and, and adapt and kind of do more stuff. So now it's the point where it's pretty much still just me. Like 90% of everything that I do, give or take, with the exception of certain things, is just me, me plus one. E plus one. So, if I had like, I, it's a question of limited resources because I, there's all these things and all these ideas that I have and I start to see more and more that I'm A, only one dude, B, I suck at delegating. I'm, you know, like I don't have a, I've never had like a career, like a night, like a real nine to five. So I don't really know how to like do those things. On, the, on the, uh, the other side of things, like what are the major obstacles that the community faces? A, everybody has this kind of weird mindset and I don't know if it's, I don't wanna, like, I don't wanna generalize, but there's a lot of fucking retards. There's a lot of fucking retards out there and all they wanna do is sit behind their computers and talk shit. And like, that's cool and everybody likes to say, oh, that doesn't really matter, you can just brush it off. But the fact is, if people were just a little bit more mature with the decisions that they make and the things that they say, we would probably be a little bit further along. Because what people don't understand and a lot of people like to talk shit about is, is the business side of it. Because they think that this is like, this is like some sort of uh, like black art or black magic or something that should be kept secret or whatever. And to me, I, what is most exciting is top eight at EVO every year. Because cause you have thousands of people all cheering for one thing. Okay, now wouldn't it be great if we could just have that like all the time, right? Wouldn't that be cool? But we can't have that if people don't, if people are gonna, if there's like no support. So like everybody thinks, everybody loves EVO and thinks it's great. But nobody makes any effort to do that any other time. So, <laughs> I don't know, that's, people, people have a problem with, people have a problem when they think that like, somebody's making money from it somehow. But to me, it's like, I, I, I've been, I, I've seen all parts of it and I can see that there's, that 
if we play our cards right, this can be the next hip hop, skateboarding, extreme sports, or whatever. And we can all be fucking rock stars and play on stage in front of thousands of people on a regular basis and all make real money and quit our fucking day jobs and do this shit full time. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be nice? But no, no. There's only like a half, there's like 50 people in the entire, I, so, sometimes there's only, I feel like there's like two dozen people in the entire world that see it like I see it. And everybody else is like, fuck you, Gutex. Because everybody can't see anybody. Yeah, yeah. People, people don't, it's like you can't have shit around here. Thank you.